Welcome to NTN Nightly, I am Janal Novel, this edition's top stories. The Ministry of Health and Wellness provides an update in its investigation. Corporate entities continue to support the fight against COVID-19. And the newly appointed Goodwill Ambassador eager to take on her new role. St. Lucia's second largest travel market is again open for business, having been closed since March 23 when the country's borders were shut. The reintroduction of British Airways to the island is another positive sign for the tourism industry. The UK market is a significant contributor to St. Lucia's visitor arrivals and St. Lucia continues to be a destination of choice. We hear more about that as Anicia Antoine begins our broadcast. Another important tourism market has opened its doors to St. Lucia. The arrival of British Airways just about 2.48 p.m. at the Uranora International Airport on Sunday, July 26, has sparked yet another positive sign for the tourism industry. The UK market is St. Lucia's second largest market following the USA. 270 visitors and nationals disembarked the aircraft, with 65 transiting to St. Vincent. The remaining 205 made their way to a nurse's station, where they are required to sanitize hands and have their temperatures checked prior to entry. They also went through additional screening prior to advancing to immigration and customs. Since the arrival of the first commercial flight on July 9th, Port Health authorities have been enforcing and adhering to the strict protocols in place for travel to the island. The St. Lucia Tourism Authority worked tirelessly throughout the pandemic to keep the destination top of mind and remind the traveling public of the protocols that must be observed when visiting St. Lucia. People of St. Lucia, uh, they continue to be very anxious about the um, flights and the markets that are opening. But I just want to take this opportunity to again um, assure them that we are doing everything possible to keep them safe and to make calculated, measured, and uh, very strategic decisions as we look at the opening of tourism. I want to make it absolutely clear that um, their health is first and foremost. But at the same time, we also welcome the UK flights. Um, this is really uh, the commencement of uh, the second largest market for tourism and I think it bodes well for the first phase of the opening of St. Lucia. So I welcome British Airways again and I welcome the opening of the UK market but we continue to open and be con I would say cautiously optimistic. To celebrate the reintroduction of British Airways, two lucky families were gifted on arrival. Your fabulous family has just won four nights, including breakfast, in a one-bedroom villa at the gorgeous Windjama Landing Villa Beach Resort. How are you feeling? Great. Talk to me. Ryan. <laughs> I'm going alone. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome home. What if I told you you just won four nights at the Bay Gardens Beach Resort for next time? Oh, wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. <laughs> okay, my flight was good. Really good. We were treated. Yeah, we always travel on Virgin, but this is the first time, obviously, because Virgin's not flying. We've traveled on British Airways. Um, and we were treated really well. Very friendly staff. As per usual protocol, locals and visitors alike are required to follow all regulations in St. Lucia as failure to do so could result in stringent penalties, including the return of visitors to the jurisdiction of origin at own expense. The arrival of British Airways is the first flight from the UK since the closure of the borders on March 23rd and will set the tone for other commercial carriers from that market. With the tourism industry on the rebound, health and safety is paramount during the pilot phase. Travelers to St. Lucia are reminded to pre-register prior to arrival by visiting www.stlucia.org slash COVID-19. For the Government of St. Lucia, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. 
St. Lucia, as of the 26th of July 2020, has recorded a total of 24 COVID-19 cases. 22 of these cases have fully recovered and two patients remain in care at the respiratory hospital and remain stable. A total of 2,927 tests have been conducted to date. The Ministry of Health and Wellness sends the indication of a St. Lucia national who traveled to St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Sunday, July 19, 2020, testing positive for COVID-19, has undergone intense contact tracing, screening and testing of all possible contacts in relation to this case. Dr. Sharon Belmar George is the Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. The family, close friends and work colleagues of the individual have been tested and placed in quarantine. None of the contacts of the individual, including family, friends and employees, have developed symptoms. On Friday, July 24, 2020, a total of 197 test results were received. And on Sunday, July 26, 2020, a total of 133 samples were also processed. The total of 330 results were all negative. These include the contacts of the case and other samples as per usual. Based on our review on the weekend, there are only four outstanding contacts to be tested today. As we continue with the phase reopening of the country, the risk of introduction of COVID-19 is increased. We expect and we anticipate to manage cases. The public is advised that all of the protocols are still in place, including the reduced numbers for public transportation and protocols for private and public sector establishments. These also include the use of face masks in public and the maintenance of safe physical distancing from others. Dr. Sharon Belmar George, Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Corporate entities have continued to show their support to the COVID-19 response. Massey stores and Digicel have both been instrumental in supporting the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, with the procurement of five ventilators and 60,000 articles of personal protective equipment for the Commission's private sector partnership against COVID-19 initiative. St. Lucia accepted its share of equipment in a virtual handing over ceremony on Monday, 27th July. Jesse Leos has the details. St. Lucia is the recipient of two of five ventilators procured by the OECS Commission thanks to a generous monetary donation by Massey Stores. The supermarket chain responded quickly and favorably to the Commission's request when it launched the private sector partnership against COVID-19 fundraiser initiative. In a symbolic handover to St. Lucia's Ministry of Health and Wellness, Massey's managing director, Martin Dorville, reaffirmed his support in the region's COVID-19 fight. Long before the, the, the crisis peaked, we were very well aware, aware that we had to play a major national part, a national role in providing that support, and more so to the health sector. So when Dr. Jules asked, it was, and he would tell you, it was with very little time lag that we were able to see yes to $100,000 US dollars in support of the cause. From the five ventilators purchased, St. Lucia and Dominica will receive two each, while St. Vincent and the Grenadines will receive one. Additional ventilators have already been procured from other funding sources and are en route to the region. 60,000 articles of personal protective equipment will be distributed to nine member states, including St. Lucia, courtesy Digicel. The telecommunications provider was the second private entity to commit to a monetary donation to the OECS Commission towards the COVID-19 fight. It is indeed our pleasure to have partnered with the OECS as part of our COVID response. Over the last few months, we've been working with the governments across the region in terms of their priorities, health and education. Um, coming together with the OECS, we realized that across the region, we needed a, a collaboration and a collective response. And PPEs being one of the things that the frontline workers needed the most, we decided that we would contribute to that. And we do hope that this goes a long way within the nine uh, departments, the, the nine countries. And we remain committed in our response and our working together with the governments. So thank you so much for being a partner with us. Thank you. 
That was Siobhan James Alexander, Chief Executive Officer of Digicel St. Lucia. Jenny Daniel, Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Wellness, accepted both donations on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia. The British Virgin Islands, Anguilla, Monstrat, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Grenada will also receive a share of the Digicel-funded PPEs. Within a fortnight, the OECS Commission managed to mobilize U.S. $700,000 through its private sector partnership against COVID-19 initiative. This fundraiser emerged from the Sustainable Development Movement in 2020 that is guided by a rigorous private sector engagement strategy. But it is interesting that our private sector in the OECS has responded despite the hit to them in the ways in which they have. And I think that is where we ground our appreciation to partners like Massey and Digicel who've come forward. Because whereas multinationals far larger than they have are asking for bailouts in the, to the tune of trillions, here they are suffering equally from to COVID, but assisting in every way possible to make this thing happen. The OECS Commission handover of COVID-19 equipment was held at the GIS studios during the NTN morning update. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leonce reporting. The government of St. Lucia has deferred the enactment of the Styrofoam and Plastic Food Service Containers Prohibition Act. In 2019, the government in Parliament presented a phased approach to reducing single-use plastic in St. Lucia. The initiative is necessary for the effective management of plastic pollution in the country while addressing the health side effects associated with some of the food containers being utilized on a daily basis. The initiative is being introduced in two phases, with the first phase having been enacted on August 1, 2019. This phase supports a ban on the importation of all styrofoam and selected single-use plastic food service containers. However, stakeholders indicate that the transition is proving difficult. Details in this report. Following consultation among the Department of Sustainable Development, other relevant agencies and stakeholders, stakeholders indicated that they faced several challenges in the first phase of the legislation and anticipated further hindrances in their ability to move into phase two. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, Honorable Dr. Gail Brigabert, indicated that the challenges already confronting stakeholders were further compounded by the COVID-19 pandemic and all these issues are being taken into consideration. Mr. Speaker, remaining cognizant of the progress we have made with this initiative and mindful of the concerns that stakeholders have brought to the fore for consideration, I therefore present to you and fellow parliamentarians a request to amend the Styrofoam Bill as stated in the document before us to allow for the following, and that is one, or these are one, the continued use of items in Part A until July 31st, 2021, two, the restriction on the manufacturing, sale, distribution, and use of items prohibited in Part A of the Act as of August 1st, 2021. And thirdly, the ban on the importation of items listed in Part B of the Act as of August 1st, 2021. The restriction on manufacturing, sale, distribution, and use of these items, we're asking that that be effective August 1st, 2022. So in summary, Mr. Speaker, we are extending the dates in each case by one year. Phase 2 was scheduled to commence on August 1, 2020. Phase 2 supports a restriction of the manufacturing, sale, distribution, and use of items prohibited in Phase 1. Phase 2 also supports a ban on the importation of other single-use plastic food service containers, inclusive of disposable plastics, bowls, knives, forks, straws, and hinge takeaway containers, to name a few, with a later ban on the manufacturing, sale, distribution, and the use of the said items. Honorable Dr. Rigobert indicated that the government is cognizant of the difficulties confronting all sectors during these unprecedented times and as such has made provisions with a view of alleviating the challenges. We want to assure the public that we are not just concerned about protecting the environment but also with safeguarding their livelihoods because of the cost of the alternative items 
The prices for meals have increased, in some cases, by as much as $3, and we've heard that cry, Mr. Speaker. It would therefore be remiss of me to not at this time reference a recently approved cabinet memo that seeks to secure a 100% waiver of import duties on all biodegradable, compostable, and plant-based food service containers. We believe, Mr. Speaker, that this will bring much relief to entrepreneurs, restauranters, and of course, our consumers. Parliament approved the Styrofoam and Plastic Food Service Containers Prohibition Act number 22 of 2019 in June 2019, and the act was enacted on the 1st of August 2019. The government of St. Lucia has appointed alternative international musician Claudia Edward Lander as St. Lucia's newest Goodwill Ambassador. The Goodwill Ambassadors program acts as a catalyst for socio-economic transformation in all sectors related to the creative arts and the industries that they support. The newest ambassador is eager to take on her new role. We hear more from Anisia Antoine. The government of St. Lucia has appointed alternative international musician Claudia Edward Ladner as its newest Goodwill Ambassador. The objective of the Goodwill Ambassadors program is to serve as a catalyst for socio-economic transformation in all sectors related to the creative arts and the industries that they support. The Goodwill Ambassadors program consists of citizens of St. Lucia who have achieved international acclaim and are able to leverage it for the benefit of the country. The Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, noted that the appointment of the Goodwill Ambassadors has already begun to bear fruit. So we found some of those very good people in the society to be a part of us. Um, they've been working with us steadfastly. Quite a few of them have already delivered you know, substantial projects mm -hmm. um, to St. Lucia. Um, I know for a fact um, we, we have people like um, Jalen Yudovic, mm -hmm. um, who is working steadfastly globally mm -hmm. um, and dealing with a number of artists, um, world-renowned world, world artists, um, who, of course, I think in his case, there'll be one artist coming in to St. Lucia um, very shortly. We'll make the announcement. Okay. Um, and of course, making a presentation to the government of St. Lucia. Um, we have Mr. Ken Shitoli, um, who lives in Canada, but has been a philanthropist and providing quite a bit of support yes. to us, particularly around medical supplies and also the disabled persons in the society. Um, we also have um, Taj Weeks, uh, everybody mm -hmm. know, a musician and philanthropist as well, doing great work, you know, in community mm -hmm. across St. Lucia. The newly appointed Goodwill Ambassador, Claudia Edward Ladner, is a Caribbean gem and a household name in St. Lucia. She is very popular with the Asian continents, especially in Thailand, where she does her annual jazz circuit. Claudia has performed in the USA, Europe, Asia and the entire Caribbean. Miss Edward Ladner has played star roles in a Canadian Lifetime TV and a Caribbean film. Senator Honorable Bellrose explained that Claudia is being recognized not only for her international achievements, but for the work she has done through her charity-based organization, Edward for Education. Claudia, as you know, has been a, a, a singer, global singer as well. She sings across the world, but more importantly for us, when we look at the work that she's doing, um, particularly here in St. Lucia, with respect to our schools and our students, um, I think it's, it's, it's something that needs to be given greater recognition. Mm -hmm. um, she's been able to build a theater. I'm not sure how many St. Lucians have built a theater wow. within a school. So she's been able to work with a school to develop a theater. She's been able to work with the um, current secondary school to be able to develop a, a, a lab, a sick lab for the children. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, in the case of the Ave Maria School, she's been able to work with them to develop a learning center. So, you know, that's the kind of work you want to recognize. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of um, acknowledgement you want to give to persons who are giving back. As a newly appointed St. Lucia ambassador, Ms. Edward Ladner plans to undertake a number of activities and projects geared at benefiting the youth of St. Lucia. With this new appointment, I think it will open more doors for me to continue the work that I'm doing. And even for me, um, 
it would be a pleasure working with other ambassadors, Goodwill Ambassadors, to even do greater, bigger projects in the future. Currently, 12 St. Lucians are appointed under the Goodwill Ambassadors program. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of We All. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Merci autant, Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Département, qui est une responsabilité pour la formation en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, et Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, qui a cette nouvelle Aquiol, présente au Primus Hutchinson. Après plusieurs mois, qualité en bas maladie corona, comme tout ce bail pays cette cité fermé, c'est une grande nouvelle pour tant que les cultivateurs ont fait les pharma et que l'autre tuyau qui a vendu des produits à l'autre pays commence à vendre des produits encore à l'Angleterre depuis le 26 juillet 2020. Avion British Airways fait un voyage pour l'aéroport Gatwick qui a transporté 13 personnes qui ont vendu pour le pays de l'Angleterre. J'ai des services cargo hot he one or declare ki it will play pour ki British Airways vire a operation cette ci encore et te encore plus satisfait pour sa ki activité vire a ses chaîne cargo qui porte bon soulagement pour les exporter et ajouter ki bien souvent nous pas ka poser assez importance à ce service là pour yo ki ka vendre produit qui sensible pour pays et ses chaîne cargo ka continuer pour pousser pour assistance ces pharma et ces ports export saint lucia pour faire assurer que le service à est sans réserve. Greg pour Mangal Trading, Naila Mangal, remarque que y a une plus officielle, difficile expérience durant une période de ça, c'était pour adresser trois désappointements. Il y a des gens qui ont acheté à l'Angleterre pour que ça recevait des produits pendant ces pharma tu aussi désappointé comme façon yo tu as reçu récompense finance par tu avais là bas quoi et pour lui même côté il te ca paraître qui il te ca prend la vidéo an, pour business ça la tv en opération encore Naila Mangal c'est une jeune fille qui engagée dans business ça là et qui a trouvé bon bénéfice quand exporte cette louche en affaire recherche et façon pour acheter qui a existé à l'Angleterre mademoiselle Sonita Daniel quand exporte cette louche ca ouais service ça là qui vivait en opération par avion British Airways, c'est un programme en avance, a bien un programme en avance pour payer avec les producteurs. Mademoiselle Daniel a déclaré que c'est une période qui était une période qui était très difficile, mais il resté en contact et puis l'Angleterre et qui était toujours à garder pour meilleure façon pour vendre et pour yo qui intéressé pour acheter. Il dit aussi ça c'est une occasion pour cette ci continuer montrer des gré qualité produit qui a sorti en pays. Parce que si ka vote l'année qui passé ou de sages ou vont place business ne pas gote ou te vle et commencer business ou parce que peut-être c'est ou yon qui était là en place là à présent ça va ça fait because ou yon pas en place là l'année l'autre monde. So lok a ouvert business ou on est pour on est pour considérer business là qualité business là va faire et qui mené ka impacter Travailler qui un business là, qui m'a dit qu'il a impacté le monde qui a resté tout près du business là. Mm -hmm. C'est important. So, nous avons vu que le développement de cette ici a avancé. C'est pour ça que c'est pour taper quoi Amadé, pour, pour ça, pour, pour ça, un de nous pour faire réponse pour enchaîner ces problèmes dans nos régions à présent. 
département de santé et l'environnement qui a réfléchi, mais moi, public là, regardez la loi de santé publique. Après 40 ans, un pile changement j'ai fait qui a posé un lot contrariété pour le public là et santé pays en général. Nous avons une discussion sur la santé publique et puis bureau de formation santé, le ministre de la santé, chef officier de l'environnement santé, M. Pak Ragnanan, expliqué les raisons nécessaires pour vivre et visiter ces lois là qui a existence pour ces quartiers de temps et pour garder de manière gouvernement ça établi un arrangement qui est égal pour toutes. Les gens qui ont compris, ce n'est pas juste qu'ils ont passé dans la caille, mais ils ont fait ça. Ils ont lavé, ils ont ouvert, ils ont fait ça. C'est l'ordre de la C'est l'ordre de la fille. Ils ont fait ça. L'autre qui a compris, c'est les gens qui ont compris sur les animaux et de quelle manière c'est pour les animaux. Ils ne sont pas les animaux. Mm -hmm. Pas qu'à um, taper quoi net. Il pas qu'à point qu'est ces animaux. Donc, so, il a vu vieux l'ordre. Et um, nous avons un chai complain about pack pou, pack cochon, um, et les mouns qui sont chiens. La caillou et qui pas qu'à nettoyer ces chiens souvent. Il pas servi bon qu'un mec pour pou, 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 um, laver place là. Mm -hmm. Nous avons un chai c'est complain ça là. Nous avons un complaint à la vieille lorde à ce que les gens qui ont pris la machine, lorde Saint-Pentia, qui a fait des lèvres. Nous avons un complaint à la vieille lorde à ce que les gens qui ont fait des autres là, c'est pas au soir, la poussière et aussi les gens qui ont pris la machine, lorde chimique là, qui a affecté les gens. Là, nous avons un complaint à ce que les gens qui ont déposé. Gloyo, glo, glo, uh, septic tank là, et mais glo, um, cuisine mm -hmm. là, et glo ça a quand même assez yo. Um, là ni complain assez, qui m'a demandé de déposer zodi, et uh, l'autre problème zodi my gwen, et what, et c'est bagay ça là qui qui a affecté santé mon. Selon Ragnanan, département qui a trouvé plus que 600 plaintes tous les années à ces diverses situations de santé publique qui a concerné eux. Ils ont aussi fait plein de quantités de temps et de points de santé publique pour le département pour adresser ces situations. En plus, c'est plein de ça, c'est problème de la fumée et d'autres situations qui ont menacé la santé publique. La semaine passée, les officiers de police qui ont branché et puis ont site des villes castrées de suivre yon étonnement pour aider yon communiquer effectivement. Vous avez cela qui dit pour trois jours, c'était en collaboration et puis le ministre de la Justice et le directeur en bio gouvernement qui est responsable pour les affaires de l'audience publique. Ces sessions ont été en bas conduite officier Shannon Innocent et assistant en bio sala, M. Stephen Brett. Ces participants ont aussi trouvé les sons en façon pour adresser le crime et aussi apprendre à faire légal et l'autre à faire des organisations. Mais c'est le maire pour Ville Castri, Peterson Francis, qui a cru que ces officiers, quand ils sont servis, ça va apprendre assez bien. Il dit qu'il est un moment qui fait possible pour ces policiers, là, qu'on cite là, à ces conseils de Ville Castri, plus capables pour développer une bonne attitude et une meilleure façon pour accomplir le travail au département et à la société aussi. Le maire Francis a ajouté que depuis le département de la ville en opération, il a conduit plusieurs étonnements en divers degrés comme investigation, manière pour faire des forces, mm -hmm. situation de drogue parmi l'autre. La responsabilité, c'est pour les salaires, selon les maires Francis, c'est pour Chen Ville Castri, bien protégé. Et c'est comme ça nous avons votre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie au temps pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour je ne puis moi encore, si vous concevez la vie, vous pouvez vous donner une nouvelle. À quoi vous avez dit? Je vous remercie pour cette nouvelle. Je Merci, Appeal Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 p.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.